Crocodile Dundee was an ambitious project undertaken by Australian producers in 1986 with the goal of creating a film that would resonate with both the local Australian audience and attract attention in the larger United States market. The risk taken by the producers paid off handsomely, with Crocodile Dundee becoming a massive commercial hit globally. It achieved the status of the highest-grossing movie in Australia at the time, and ranked as the second highest grossing release in the United States for the year, trailing only behind Top Gun. Despite its modest budget of $10 million, Crocodile Dundee generated an extraordinary box office return of over $328 million. This unexpected success led to the rapid expansion of the franchise, with two sequels released in 1988 and 2001 solidifying the legacy of Crocodile Dundee as a cinematic phenomenon. But since then, many actors have passed away, so who are they? In this exploration, we'll delve into their stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go! John Meelan as Walter Riley an actor whose three-decade career was highlighted by supporting work in the stunningly profitable Crocodile Dundee films and Nicholas Rogue's world cinema classic Walkabout, John Malon entered show business in 1959, appearing in the Gregory Peck lead sci-fi film On the Beach. John Malon, actor, was born on Fro May 1934 at Mosman, Sydney, eldest of three children of Sydney-born parents, Theodore Boson Mayon, clerk, and his wife, Florence Beatrice Jill Ney Callaghan. John was educated at Mosman Church of England Preparatory and Sydney Grammar Schools. As a child, he performed at the Mosman Children's Theatre Club, of which his parents were founding members. In 1944, Malon made his radio debut in the Australian Broadcasting Commission's Bush Christmas. He played an aboriginal boy in The Search for the Golden Boomerang on 2UW. Subsequently, he appeared in many other ABC children's serials, including The Gangos, Land of the Rainbow, and Budge's Gang. Other radio work comprised The Cadbury Show and the title role in Ruth Park's Stumpy in 1947. That year, he received praise for his role as young David in David Copperfield on 2CH. He also played Jim Hawkins in Treasure Island. He acted in various radio plays and series, among them Rebecca, On the Waterfront, and Australia's longest-running serial Blue Hills, which began in 1949. Millen had made his stage debut in 1946 as Master Wakefield in White Oaks at the Independent Theater. His first professional performance was in 1948, with the title role in The Winslow Boy at the Minerva Theater, King's Cross. He performed with the John Alden Shakespearean Company in productions such as King Lear and The Merchant of Venice. Returning to the Independent, he played in Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman and Clifford Odette's Winter Journey. In 1956, he toured Australia and New Zealand in J.C. Williamson's production of The Reluctant Debutante. And in 1958, appeared opposite June Salter in the Phillips Street Review Cross section. He married her on 21st June 1958 at St. James's Church of England, Sydney. The couple traveled to England where Millon continued to work on stage, as well as in television and on films such as Billy Budd, 1962, Guns at Batasi, 1964, and 633 Squadron, 1964. He returned to Australia in 1964 to appear on stage in Rattle of a Simple Man opposite Salter. Though their marriage ended in divorce in 1971, they remained friends. On 5 April 1972, at Crow's Nest Methodist Church, Malon married English-born actress Rita Bunny Gibson. Malon's film career had begun in 1959 with a cameo role in On the Beach. His next film was The Sundowners. In 1966, he took the role of Dennis in They're a Weird Mob. He had starred as Nino in a serialized radio version. He appeared in more than 20 local features, including Walkabout, 
wake in fright. The cars that ate Paris ride a wild pony. The picture show man, heat wave, the wild duck, crocodile Dundee, crocodile Dundee 2, and the everlasting secret family. In 1977, he received the Australian Film Institute Award for Best Actor for his portrayal of James Casey in The Fourth Wish, having won a Logie Award for his role in the television series of the same name. With lead roles in Thunder of Silence and A Tongue of Silver for Channel 7, Malon started on television in 1959. He became a household name in the 1960s, playing Wally Stiller in the comedy series My Name's Magooly, What's Yours? and the sequel, Rita and Wally. Although Milan shied away from ongoing roles in television serials, he guest starred in many popular series including Skippy, Homicide, Division 4, and Spy Force. He played a memorable character in JNP Productions' A Country Practice, on which his brother, the director Robert Bob Mayon, also worked. Millen received a Logie Award in 1979 for his performance in Bit Part. Other ABC productions included Over There, Lane End, and Robert Caswell's acclaimed miniseries Scales of Justice. In the 1980s, he played Governor General Sir John Kerr in Byron Kennedy and George Miller's The Dismissal and Brigadier General Ian Templeton in The Dunera Boys. Sadly, Malon passed away from cirrhosis. His body was found in his home at Neutral Bay on 11 August 1989, David Gulpilil as Neville Bell. Few actors of international renown were born under a tree. But that's how life began for David Gulpilil, who was raised away from extraneous influences in Australia's northeast Arnhem Land in the traditions of his Mandhal Puingu tribal group. David changed the way the Australian screen represents Aboriginal peoples and their cultural heritage. He brought the realism of ethnography into his portrayal of aboriginality, replacing earlier derogatory and degrading representations of his people within Australian feature films. His presence also ended the reign of non-aboriginal actors playing aboriginal character roles. As an actor, he reached the pinnacle of success in the 1970s with principal roles in a string of award-winning films including Walk About, Storm Boy, and The Last Wave. He also starred alongside some of the best actors in the world, including Dennis Hopper in Mad Dog Morgan. During this time, Gopalil traveled the globe and mixed with world icons, including Bruce Lee, Marlon Brando, John Lennon, Bob Marley, and Jimi Hendrix. In Walkabout, Gopalil embodied the stereotypical image of a traditional aborigine, untainted by Western civilization. Over the course of his career, he transformed this constructed identity into a more nuanced and accurate representation of aboriginality. Born into one of the world's oldest continuous cultures, Gulpalil spent his childhood submerged within the customs and traditions of his peoples, the Yongu, from Arnhem Land. Here he gained the skills, knowledge, and expertise to take custodial responsibility for his country to care for his family, and to participate in cultural activities and ceremonies. By the 1970s, the peoples of Arnhem Land were no strangers to film. From 1910 onwards, they performed their cultural practices for a lineage of documentary filmmakers, from Walter Baldwin Spencer, Donald Thompson, and Charles Mountford, to Cecil Holmes and Ian Dunlop. This background provided Gulpalil with an insight into audio-visual representations of Aboriginal peoples and cultures. It helped enable him to bring ethnographic imagery into feature films. As a traditional dancer, Gulpalil adapted the precision, grace, and agility of this art form into his acting. In all his films, Gulpalil infused his own cultural knowledge and identity into his characters. He portrays the demeanor, skills, and knowledge of a man of high degree within an aboriginal cultural context. Over the course of his career, he dignified and enriched the representation of aboriginality beyond the understanding of any non-indigenous scriptwriter or director. 
This new characterization of aboriginal masculinity gained widespread respect from the industry and audiences alike. He introduced audiences to traditional practices and familiarized them with aboriginal forms of interpersonal communication. In the tracker, Gulpilil displays a mastery of silence. He uses aboriginal sign and body language, including subtle eye and facial expressions, to convey meaning and sentiment. It is through this film and rabbit-proof fence that Gulpilil presented a new way of seeing and understanding Aboriginal peoples and their cultural heritage. Like many successful Australian actors in the 1970s, Gulpilil appeared in numerous high-rating television series, but he was always given the stereotyped role of the traditional Aboriginal to play in episodes of Homicide, 1976, Rush, 1976, and Boney, 1972, was 73. Following a memorable role in Crocodile Dundee, 1986, Peter Fayamain, Gulpilil achieved formal recognition of his services to the arts in the 1987 Queen's Birthday Honours List, being awarded the Member of the Order of Australia. In 2001, he was awarded the Australian Centenary Medal for his service to Australian society through dance and acting in the Queen's New Year Honours List. Gulpilil lives with his people in the Northern Territory and remains an inspiration to many Aboriginal people across the country. Through the trials and tribulations of his life, he has remained true to his people, his culture, and his identity as a Yongu man. With a career spanning 40 years, Gulpilil's contribution to the Australian film industry is part of the history of both the Australian cinema and its representation of Indigenous Australians. David Gulpilil died on November 29, 2021, at the age of 68. Mark Blum as Richard Mason Mark Blum an accomplished New York stage and screen actor known for his versatile roles spanning from deeply flawed husbands to self-assured blowhards, passed away on Wednesday in Manhattan at the age of 69. The cause of death, as reported by close family friend Lee Wilkoff, was complications arising from the coronavirus, aggravated by Mr. Bloom's asthma. A fixture in the off-Broadway scene for decades, Blum's standout moment occurred in 1989 when he portrayed a time-traveling 20th-century playwright who befriends Gustav Mahler in the playwright's Horizons production of Albert Inorato's Gus and Al. In his review for the New York Times, Frank Rich commended Blum's appealing, weary-eyed portrayal interpreting the character's self-martyrdom as a manifestation of rueful hypersensitivity to the modern world. Mark Blum's passing is another poignant reminder of lives lost to the coronavirus pandemic, leaving behind a legacy of impactful contributions to the world of theater and film. At the Obie Awards ceremony, Mr. Blum was honored with one of the 13 uncategorized off-Broadway performance awards for that season. Among his fellow winners were Nancy Marchand and Fivush Finkel. His notable Broadway career spanned three and a half decades, featuring appearances in nine productions. In his Broadway debut in The Merchant, 1977, set in 16th century Venice and inspired by a certain Shakespearean classic, Mr. Blum showcased his versatility as a theater professional. His diverse Broadway roles included playing Eddie, the young main character's recently widowed and debt-ridden father, in Neil Simon's Lost in Yonkers, 1991, alongside Irene Wirth, Spalding Gray's campaign manager in Gore Vidal's The Best Man, 2000, a role he reprised in the 2012 revival, Leo Herman, a.k.a. Chuckles the Chipmunk, the detestable host of a children's television show in A Thousand Clowns, 2001, and juror number one, The Reasonable Foreman, in Twelve Angry Men, 2004. At the time of his death, Mark Blum was an acting teacher at HB Studio in New York, where he headed the year-long core training program named for Uta Hagen and served as a faculty member at Brooklyn College. Betty Bobbitt as Meg, Betty Bobbitt, who has died aged 81 following a stroke, was an American actor and singer who moved to Australia and found worldwide fame in the cult TV soap prisoner Cell Block H.
As the lesbian Judy Bryant, a motherly figure, she went through the gamut of experiences and emotions in the fictional Wentworth Detention Center, being raped, surviving a murder attempt, breaking out of the prison twice, and discovering she had a long-lost daughter. The producers were originally keen to play up the character's sexuality, but that changed when the serial caught on with viewers in the U.S. In the beginning, she was allowed to be obviously in love and allowed to talk about it, Bobbitt told Gay Times. Then, the show was sold to America. At one point, Judy had to kiss another character, and the Americans said, No way, she can talk about it, but we don't want to see her kiss someone. So, from that moment on, they decided to give Judy's gayness a low profile. The actor was more concerned about the soap's violence. One week, you'd be raped, and the next you'd be at someone with a bit of lead pipe, she said. The program, set in the high-security wing of a detention center in the fictional Melbourne suburb of Wentworth, was launched in Australia under the title Prisoner. For international distribution, it was retitled Prisoner, Cell Block H, to avoid confusion with the surreal 1960s drama The Prisoner, starring Patrick McGuhan, and was picked up by British TV only in 1984, five years after it had begun. Bobbitt joined a year into the show's seven-year run, 1979-86, when Judy, a taxi driver, got herself convicted for trying to smuggle drugs into the prison to be with her lover. She left in 1985 after appearing in 430 episodes. Other memorable characters included the matriarchal queen, Bea Smith, played by Val Lehman, the childlike Doreen Anderson, Colette Mann, the alcoholic Lizzie Birdsworth, Sheila Florence the tough, uncaring Frankie Doyle, Carol Burns, the corrupt officer Joan Ferguson, Maggie Kirkpatrick, and the Dewar Deputy Governor Vera Bennett, Fiona Spence. Bobbitt was turned down for the role of Beastly Bee on the grounds that she was too nice, but was later invited to audition as the kind, compassionate, American-born Judy. Terry Gill, as Duffy Actor. Terry Gill best remembered for his roles in the film Crocodile Dundee, the television series The Flying Doctors, and his portrayal of Santa Claus in the annual Carols by Candlelight concerts, passed away at the age of 75. Gill was diagnosed with lung cancer in late 2014, marking his final performance for Vision Australia's Carols by Candlelight, a role he had embraced for 27 years. Terry Gill, 25 October 1939, 25 February 2015, was an English-Australian actor, theater owner, producer, director, and writer. As a character actor, he established himself in Australian television, often playing police officers and contributing to over 26 Australian television productions, either as a regular or in guest roles. He was closely associated with Crawford Productions and Reg Grundy Organization. Gill was a recurring cast member in the women's prison drama Prisoner as Dad Inspiard Jack Grace, a regular cast member as Sergeant Jack Carruthers in The Flying Doctors, and played another recurring role in Blue Healers as Superintendent Clive Adamson. He also made a guest appearance on Neighbors. In the film Crocodile Dundee, Gill portrayed the leader of a group of kangaroo shooters whom Dundee, Paul Hogan, confronts in the Walkabout Creek Hotel bar. He later uses a dead kangaroo as cover to scare the shooters. Additionally, Gill played the role of Santa Claus on Australian TV's annual Carols by Candlelight for 27 years, appearing alongside well-known children's entertainers High Five and Australian TV icon Humphrey B. Bear. For many years, Gill and his wife Carol Ann operated the Tivoli Theatre restaurant in Melbourne, producing pantomimes and theatre shows featuring numerous well-known Australian performers. Gus Mercurio as Frank. Australian-born Gus Mercurio was an actor who built himself a successful Hollywood film career. Mercurio's career in acting began with his roles in various films like Alvin Rides Again, 1974, featuring Graham Blundell, the comedy Eliza Fraser, 1976, with John Castle and Raw Deal, 1977. He also appeared in High Rolling, 1977, and the mystery Dead Man's Float, 
1980, with Sally Boyden. His passion for acting continued to his roles in projects like the romance The Blue Lagoon, 1980, with Brooke Shields, the Steve Railsback horror flick Turkey Shoot, 1981, and the Kirk Douglas western The Man from Snowy River, 1982. He also appeared in The Return of Captain Invincible, 1983, with Alan Arkin. Nearing the end of his career, he tackled roles in Return to the Blue Lagoon, 1991, the action movie Lightning Jack, 1994, with Paul Hogan and the comedy adventure Doing Time for Patsy Cline, 1999, with Matt Day. He also had a part in the TV miniseries Sword of Honor, 1989-1990. Mercurio last acted in the Quentin Tarantino foreign, not quite Hollywood, the wild, untold story of Ozploitation, 2009. Mercurio passed away in December 2010 at the age of 82. Michael Lombard as Sam Charlton. During the heyday of the primetime TV soap operas Dallas and Dynasty, CBS came up with the obvious idea of a sideline spoof. The title, Filthy Rich, was plain enough. Co-starring alongside Delta Burke and Dixie Carter was actor Michael Lombard as Marshall Beck, the older brother of the series Patriarch, played by Slim Pickens, and then Forrest Tucker. The 1982-83 show was not a big-haired success, but its two female stars later reunited with show creator Linda Bloodworth for an effort that definitely was designing women. Desi separately. Lombard has had the career of an itinerant actor, with a notable footnote. As a testament to the reach of NBC's Law and Order franchise, he has appeared on three different editions of the program over a two-decade span. He was Miller in a 1992 episode of Law and Order and Robert Mallors in 1997. He played Reddick's attorney on Criminal Intent in 2002 and he appeared as an orthopedic surgeon on Special Victims Unit in 2005. As such, his work is a vivid reminder of how much work venerable long-running programs like Law and & Order and CSI provide for SAG performers. He died of heart attack on August 13, 2020. Anne Francine as Fran. Anne Francine the Broadway actress and cabaret performer who was part of Manhattan's Café Society heyday in the 1940s and 1950s, died in a Connecticut hospital deck three after suffering a stroke, according to friend Donald Smith. Despite an earlier stroke six years ago, Smith said, Ms. Francine was a tireless nurturer of young cabaret talent and spent summers as a master class teacher evaluating cabaret performers at the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center in Waterford, CT. Ms. Francine was 82 and lived in Old Lyme, CT. Although she sang in famous international cabaret rooms that sound almost fictional to the modern ear, Cock Rouge, The Persian Room, Club Cuba, Café Pierre, Copacabana, Ms. Francine was also a respected actress in plays and musicals, appearing as a Vera Charles replacement in May May in 1996, and as Vera in the Angela Lansbury Broadway revival in 1983. She memorably played a rich matron in the Lincoln Center revival of Anything Goes with Patti LuPone. Born in 1917, Atlantic City to Philadelphia Blue Blood parents, Albert and Emily Francine, the free-spirited Anne went against family wishes and took singing lessons and made her stage debut in Rogers and Hart's Too Many Girls on the Road in Detroit. After Stock Theater, she made her Broadway debut in Marriages for Single People in 1945. She played Flora Bush in By the Beautiful Sea on Broadway in 1954 and appeared in New York and on the road in The Great Sebastians. She also appeared as a replacement in Tenderloin on Broadway in 1960 and toured with Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. She was an off-Broadway, Broadway, London stock and regional performer in between her celebrated club dates. Ms. Francine was known for the comic ideas she brought to her club performances, sometimes adding physical gags to certain standard numbers. Crooning, dancing in the dark, for example, she clawed the walls for a light switch when singing the line. Looking for the light, cabaret advocate Smith told Playbill Online. 
Her signature songs included The Lamp is Low and Raggedy Ann. Smith remembers how Ms. Francine relished taking a curtain call at Lincoln Center for Anything Goes and then donned an evening gown and took a rented limo to her late-night engagement at the Oak Room at the Algonquin Hotel. She would sweep into the lobby and into her act. She was a natural who developed her gift with vocal lessons, according to Smith, executive director of the Mabel Mercer Foundation. Ms. Francine and Mercer were friends. Ms. Francine never married. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated on our future videos. See you in the next one.